Hi, welcome to my YouTube channel, Baking for Business. I'm Jojo Lydia, director and cake artist Little Hands Bakehouse, located in Akurungata, we are in Kenya. And on this channel, we are going to talk about cake business, entrepreneurship, we'll be sharing tips and hacks, we'll be having story times, and we'll be answering to the many questions that we receive them in our DMs. If this is for you, please subscribe to the channel for more of our videos and on the comments below please feel free to ask any of your cake related questions and i'll be answering them for you to the best of my knowledge on to our topic today we'll be discussing about the company policies here it's a little bit of personal how we came to have the table little hands bakehouse policies and now that we are dealing with cake Cake is the core thing when it comes to the business here. So all our policies are coming from anything and everything related to cakes. In regards to since the client has contacted you from the initial stage of I want a cake from you, we discuss about all the deposits and all that and all that. So the, uh, the policies are coming from everything to do with the cake. So the policy number one, we'll be talking about deposits. When you're... Uh, when you want to book an order for the client, how can you come about a policy for your business? The policy is all about what the clients need to do when it comes about the deposit of that cake. So come up with something like, we're looking at areas, how much percentage of the deposit do you need? When is the appropriate time for the clients to make the deposit? And is the deposit refundable or it's non-refundable those are the terms and conditions you're supposed to put on your business and please discuss them across to your clients so for us at little hands we have a client they've come to our side like they want the cake we've closed everything to the point that they are ready to make the deposit so you might find a client is asking you can i pay when delivering the cake no it's not possible so we need a deposit here and for us it's a uh, at least 75 percent and the balance to be paid on or before delivery some may feel 75 percent is much but as it is we need uh, we need the money during production as compared to when the final product is there so think about what works for you in your business and you can whatever figure is good for you 50 and all that we started all the way from 25 50 but for us now 75 is what is working for us and before the cake is the it's dispatched from the bake house we need the balance so uh when it comes to paying for the balance you get to get your product after the balance is paid. This way it saves us time asking you for money, asking you for money for the cake that was already eaten. So something else, a deposit brings a commitment between a client and the baker. For us, why do we need a deposit? For us, the deposit is to confirm the order and to book a slot. Not unless the deposit is given, that conversation is as null and void. It's not, it's not an order. So come up with a policy of deposits. What you want the clients to know about paying a deposit for your cake, for it to be an order. Make it very clear even before they start committing to anything. This is why we find so many questions. We see uh, bakers complaining. What happens? How do we ask the clients for the money for the cake that was eaten a couple of months ago? You're not supposed even to have that story in the first place because you have the tabled uh, policies about it. If you don't have is when those things are, uh, such kinds of questions are coming about. So for policy number two, we also have the delivery part of it. As home bakers, we have issues, we have problems since we bake from home. Some of our houses are off town. Others are very far from the CBD. So come about the policy when it comes to delivery. What is it that you want for your clients? Do you want them to come and pick cakes from your bakehouse, from your bakery, from your cake houses, from your homes? Or do you want to deliver it to them? You have to communicate this clearly to your clients. Uh, giving an example, we have a baker here in Nakuru. It's known they don't deliver cakes. You just go to them. You pick your cake and that's it. No stories about it. And the clients know that I have, I'm booking my cake. I have to go and pick the cake. So whatever 
policy you put, your clients will adhere to that and they will support your business for that. So for us, when we were starting, we had uh, issues of coming to transportation because we are off town. So uh, we told the clients, you can come pick the cake. Some tried and all that. But we had um, feedback from a client. What if we could get these cakes in town? I would like to buy from you, but I will need to have this cake in town. Can you think about it there? So coming to deliberate, why not? Coming to town and for us, most of the business is in town. So it's something we had to sit down back to the drawing board. Why not? We can as well take the cakes to town. But now to come up with the strategy behind it. When we agreed to the client that we want the cakes to town, then another story came about. We find, let's say on a Saturday, when it's super busy, you might have seven cakes for one Saturday or ten. These are different 10 clients with different 10 needs. You find one tells you I need a cake at 8, another one I need a cake at 10, another one I need a cake at 11. So how is it possible to do deliveries of single cakes at specific time for the clients? So now that's where our policy came about to be. So for us, the policy as it is when it comes to delivering, yes, we deliver the cakes to town, but we have specific timings. We do it one to two on daily basis. How did we come to reach 1 to 2? At first we started 11 to 12, but as it is, it's overwhelming. We, we came to see it's 12, the cakes are not ready, maybe five cakes are ready, others are remaining. So you're like you're doing half slots and half slots. You're trying to talk to the client that can I push for another hour? So by the look, of, uh, the look at things when we could not do 11 to 12, but it was happening 1 to 2, so that became our time. We knew by one, the cakes are being picked here. Between one and two, every client must have all their cakes. But we don't satisfy everyone when it comes to the slot of one to two. There's a client who will tell you, but one to two is very far from me. I need to have the cake at 11, at 10. What can we do? If you can't wait for one to two, you are free to come and pick the cake from the bakehouse at any of your time. So you see, it's all about bringing... Uh, rules and regulation, this is what we call the policies, so the clients tend to know. If I need the cake, I'm going to get one to two, but if I need earlier, they'll come to you. So think about all, this, all these uh, questions we are receiving about how to deal about delivery. Look at yourself, what is your location? Maybe you're missing that client because you don't deliver to them. Give them options and listen to your client. They're the ones who help you with solutions to your cake. So for us, we had the issue with the de delivery because we are far from the CBD, but they are the ones who gave us the options. Bring the cakes to us. Something else next to the cake. We want to give the client comfort to the last bit. As much as we deliver the cakes for free to town, we can as well do the cakes and deliver them to your place at your doorstep. So for the convenience, you don't have to leave your house to come and collect the cake. But at an additional cost from town to your home. Who would not want that? You don't need to leave your house. Either way you leave your house, you're still going to, to have that expense. You'll have uh, the Wasili rides, you'll take your car and come for the cake, but as well you can only use 200 or 250 and have the cake at your doorstep. So with all this convenience, there's no way the client will not buy that cake from you, not unless there's just something else but you've cushioned every place that has a loophole for you. So the question that we receive so much about the delivery, think about it, look at yourself, see what are clients complaining? What is the main problem that you're having with that delivery to the point that you're saying it's a problem? When you were starting, I was everything. I was the baker, I was the marketer, I was the, the one looking for clients, I was the one delivering, I was the one decorating the cake. So by the time you finish one cake, you're just sweating and tired and delivering the cake at the same time. First, it's waste time. By the time we leave Ngata to town, that's 20 minutes, right? And coming back again, that is 20. Maybe you have waiting minutes of 20 for the clients. That's one hour. But I can decorate two buttercream cakes within one hour and I get that money. So you save money and you, uh, you save time to get more money. And in this sense, also your driver gets that job. So when you're starting becomes a problem, but as you progress, everything tends to like fall in place to the point that now you have the policies of how things 
are supposed to be. Something else, policy number three, we have the inspiration images. You find a client asking you, I need this cake exact. Our questions, our answers for such questions, first, we don't guarantee exact. And we don't promise exact. This is Little Hands Bakehouse. You've downloaded the photo from Pinterest everywhere and everywhere. You need exact. You don't know even the color tonation of those, uh, of those cakes. The pigmentation, we might not even find them in Kenya. The colors are different. So if you tell me you need exact, the only place you can get exact of that cake is a photocopy. So give us room for that. I get uh, concerns from bakers. Like if I tell the client I can't, give, I can't give exact, they will go. Trust me, they will not go. Your client is your client. And the moment you tell them you can't do that, they will even believe you more and give you the room to even do what you can. And even for us, when we get cakes now with our clients that we have, they can even send five cakes. Like, tell me what little hands can do. Choose what little hands can do. So that way, because you already informed them that you can't deliver 100% and they know. So when they come here, we can't give 100%. As much as you feel Jojo Lydia can hack this, for sure it's not everything that we can hack. And I'll definitely tell my client this one I cannot. Let's try something else. Another thing, now let's come to a bit of story time. When it comes to inspiration image, when we were starting, we had this client and we received a, a cake order. It was a two-tiered cake. And as it is, it was a, a baby graduating from preschool going to year one. So the client sent the image. It had A, B, C, D, uh, number one, number two, the way we decorate the graduation cakes. But in between the tiers, there was a, a fondant ring, then a fondant bow to complement the, the transition of the top tier and the lower tier. So for me, when I was doing the colors, I did all the colors that were there, any little baby's colors, the pink, the blue, la la la, number one in blue, like that, like that. So when you look at this uh, uh, image, that bow and the fondant ribbon were electric green. So for me in my head first, this is a graduation. This electric green, there's nowhere it's in connection even to the school that this baby is going. So when I did my color combination of the of the colors, I saw like light blue will work best for us so that we just complement the whole cake, but we didn't do the electric green. Upon delivering the cake, the first thing the client wanted to see the cake. So she opened the box and saw the color is blue. She was so mad. Like I sent you the image. What did you do about the image? You gave me your color. You've disappointed me. So in this case, the client was disappointed by not giving the color that the client wanted. So again, a lesson that we learned there. Always listen to the client. She was very angry. We didn't deliver to what they wanted. But the cake was very nice. They ate. But that was not the point. It wasn't about the cake being nice. It was about the color that we didn't give them what, we need, what she needed. Now, for us and for me personally, it was a lesson. When a client sent me, sends any cake, like I need this cake, I don't take it for granted. I always ask, what is it that you like about this cake? What is it? So a client will tell you, I like the height is very short. Some will tell you the height, the way it's very tall is what I'm looking for. There's a cake we did last two weeks. It was in Master Dielo. I'm going to put the photo. So this cake I posted in the morning and in the evening, another client asked for the same cake. My question was, what is it that you liked about that cake? She blankly me, told me the Master Dielo in it is the in thing for me. So you see, when you're doing that cake, as much as you want to change the design to give it another color, hell no. There's no way you can change the color because that's what has brought the cl client to you. That mustard. So we had to do the cake. So take the point home. Always listen to your client. Whenever the cake comes, just don't assume, I thought that, I thought that. I'm thinking, I, I thought that. The thought part of it is of no use. Just ask the client, what is it that you like in a specific cake? 
some will just send uh, images for inspiration like not necessarily the same but that is the theme that i'm looking for maybe the theme is like let's say a like pop patrol that's just the theme so work around but the the purpose of the client sending you that cake was just to show you the theme so always ask ask if you want to be safe at times they will just tell you uh maybe maybe just just the icing is what i wanted on the cake so you'll be able to figure out and you'll come to see what is it that you're bringing about when it comes to the policies when it comes to the inspiration images many bakers have the problem and tend to think about if i say i cannot that's when it comes to like uh, you're going to lose the client and that's why we have the cases of what i ordered versus what i got but this is because you strongly gave the client the surety that you're going to deliver that one but if you tell the client i can't hack this design i can't hack this they're going to believe you they're going to give you the room all right so that's it about it another thing is about publication of our work once i've done the cake i really want to to market my work that's why we have our social media platforms we have our website running how will the website run without our portfolio and the portfolio has to be our cakes that we've done keep in mind this client is the one who tells you for me to give you a job i want to see the work that you've done because we've found stories a client is telling the bakers to pull out the photos that they've done because it's my cake I paid for that cake, so no need to advertise that cake, even if it doesn't have their photos, even if it doesn't have anything that it's showing it's them. But simply because I paid for you, don't advertise with my cake. So uh, for me, I think it's something you're supposed to put it very clear. This client came to me because of the previous work that I've done. So if they're denying you the chance of not using the cakes that you've done for them to market their work. So what are we talking about? So for us, it's a policy. When we have that publication, we are free to use it at any given point, anytime, anywhere. So we will use the photos to market ourselves and we use the photo to, to grow our portfolio. So those are the policies you can look for see whatever uh, what you can work within your business as at the stage as it is now and see how you can move with it policy number four we talk about quotation you find a client comes to you asking for a quotation how much is this cake how much is this cake for us when it's uh, birthday cakes the quotation is valid for one week the price that i've given you one week back might not be the price that I'll give you now for variations of so many things. The market keeps changing everything that we have. All the supplies that we buy, they keep changing without even prior notice. So if I've given a client a quotation and for sure you know about the date when you need the cake, you bet when you, for me, I will suggest you pay for that cake at that time. So when there's an there is uh, an influx on the prices of anything. It will be upon the bakehouse now to bear that. But when you come back again after one week, again after two weeks, you want the same cake with the same prices, chances may be it won't be the same price. And reason being, the market is also not stable. It keeps changing. The prices keep going up on everything. So for us, it's a policy. The quotation given is not lifetime. And this one also happened to the wedding cakes. We talk about weddings in January, your wedding is in December. If you committed us within that time, then yes, we'll not be talking about anything. If we talk about your cake in January, you come back again in August with the same thing, the prices might not be the same. So this is something we put across and our client knows when you come back after some time, the prices will not be that one. So it's a policy on us and we're really uh, working to add, putting it to be there all the time. Also, another policy, the cakes that we bake here, some have nuts, some have alcohol when it comes to like fruit cakes. So it's upon the clients to notify us of any allergies and all that. We wouldn't know. And also it's upon the client to tell us the, any reservation of anything, even in regards to the uh, to the guests that they are expecting. We wouldn't know where the cakes are going. We wouldn't know where the cakes will be eaten and with whom. 
so it's upon them to tell us yes i don't want my cakes with milk we'll omit the milk i don't want my cakes with eggs i'm sorry we don't do eggless cake here and you can refer them to somewhere else so something like that just policies come about and then it will make your life very easy the client will tend to to adhere to the rules and they will be accustomed to your brand and it will be an easy story for all of us if you've learned anything in this uh, video please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more of these videos and on the comment below please you can share with us what is it that you want us to talk about and we'll try and discuss them to you to the best of our knowledge see you in the next video ciao